Hey romance readers, happy Sunday. I hope everyone having a great day today. Uh, back with another video. And today's video, uh, I'm gonna do, uh, show you some of the haul that I got uh, when I went to McKay's. I hope you all, everyone out there enjoyed my videos, um, my video that I took when I was in McKay. Um, I'm not finished yet. I got two more videos that I need to upload uh, from McKay because it was a long, that, that video was, <laughs> I had to stop and start, stop and start because I didn't do any editing. And you know how uh, on some uh, um, people on YouTube, they, they take you shopping with them, but they uh, also cut some of it. You know, they have music planned and then they fast forward a little bit. No, I didn't do none of that. I'm not editing. <laughs> so it's just me uh, actually shopping and reading the back of books forever. <laughs> so if you don't mind watching those videos... Uh, I got two more to upload so but I just want to uh, put this video in between those uh, just to break up the monotony of just looking at me shopping so I'm gonna do uh, part of the, the haul that I got from McKay and then I'm gonna upload my other two videos and then at the end I'll do the other part of the haul um, to wrap it all up my McKay visit so let's get started uh, first up oh and I also mentioned that the books that I was looking for in McKay were uh, some of the books that you all recommended to me out there I found some of them and some of them I didn't so I'm still on the hunt for those some of the ones that I didn't find um, I think in this section I don't know if, I don't think any of the any of these were the one you recommend but it, it's some of the authors that you did recommend somebody recommend that I read uh, Sophie Burns I got my list here uh, what was the book? Uh, Sophie Barnes, A Most Unlikely Duke. But I didn't find that. But I got Sophie Barnes, How Miss Rutherford, How Miss Rutherford Got Her Groove Back. And it's a historical. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my, my voice might be going out because I don't know if I got a call. I just got some yeah drainage going on. Uh, it's a lot going on. <laughs> and my nose is stuffy. Yeah. It might be too much information, but yeah. <laughs> so my voice go out, just bear with me. And so I got this one since I couldn't find the actual uh, Most Unlikely Duke. Um, I've never read Sophie Burns before, so I'll say I'll try this out. And I'll keep looking for, uh, hopefully I can find uh, a Most Unlikely Duke. I can get it at, um, I hope I won't have to play, pay full price. I can get it at a cheaper rate. Uh, so I'll go in there and look on uh, Amazon in the used book section and see can I find it. But uh, but this one I paid 50 cent for. Let me take this off if I can. That came right off. And this was 50 cent. And I'll read you a little bit of back of this. Emily Rusford is having a very bad day. Of course, having the man you love forever announce his engagement to your now very formal best friend will do that. Emily is sure nothing good could possibly come out of this horrid situation, but she lets her sisters, along with Frances Riley, the, de the delectable but brooding Earl of Denhurst, convince her that a season in London will be just the thing. Now Emily has a choice. Suck in a corner while her sister enjoys the glitter of the tongue or become the belle of the ball, dazzling everyone on an earl's arm. But as Frances helped Emily get back on her feet, she quickly realizes that a childhood crush is nothing compared to the power of true love. So I guess her and Frances is going to fall in love. How Miss Rutherford got her groove back. Sophia Burns. Um, next, these two were not on my list. I picked these up myself. As you know, in the uh, I think in the second video you will see me looking at these uh, because I read uh, Elizabeth Vaughn before. I think I, it was a series that I read of hers, The Warlord, and I enjoyed the first book, but the other two, it was a three book series of The Warlord, uh, Chronicles. Uh, I think the series was called Chronicles of the Warlands. Uh, but I enjoyed the first book, and her writing was all right. The second two I didn't enjoy too much, but. I said I'll go ahead and try these out and both of these are paranormal. Uh, the first one is White Star. I paid $4.50. Look, they didn't have this for $0.50. Cent. $4.50. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, there might be some coughing going on up in this video. <laughs> this was $4.50. And I'll read a little bit of this. My camera might go out, but I'll just restart it and keep taping. Uh, White Star. I, I don't like this cover too much, but hey. I read a little bit of this. There is no one more adored. Everyone knows that. That's the little first paragraph of it. There is no one more adored. Everyone knows that 
The Lady High Priestess Evelyn is virtuous and noble, one of the leaders of the rebellion, rebellion against the unjust usurper, as well as a gentle healer who, who channels the power of the gods to help the sick and injured. There is no one more despised. Orin Blackheart, the scourge of Palin, is renowned as an evil man. As the war leader of one of the usurper supporters, he has killed many and stood by while the sorcerer has served. Let me start all over. As the war leader of one of the usurper supporters, he has killed many and stood by while the sorcerer he serves created an army of the undead. And there is nothing more expected, unexpected than passion. When Orin takes the Libya prisoner during the war, each will discover there is more to the other than they expected, and souls that should have clashed will be forged together in desire, redemption, and glory. So it sound that sounded interesting. So I was like, let me pick this up. And this is Elizabeth Elizabeth Bond. I hope I pronounced that last name right. And this is a paranormal romance. And it was four dollars and fifty cent. Next I have by Elizabeth Vaughn. Um, Dagger Star, and this is also paranormal, but this was a dollar seventy-five. And let me take this off of here, if I can. Oh, this one don't even want to come off, so I'm not even finna wrestle with that. But as you can see, a dollar seventy-five. I read a little bit of this too. She is a mercenary trained in the ways of war and the blade, nothing more. So when I read that part, cause she gonna be, you know, bad, bad a. <laughs> No cuss word on this channel. Yeah, she gonna be kicking tail. I was like, yeah, I gotta get it. A woman known only as Red Gloves has come to the land of Palin. So I guess these like a, um, maybe these are also serious because this miss mentioned Palin too. In search of work, a woman known only as Red Glove has come to the land of Palin in search of work. What she finds, however, is the torch fields and rage farms of a land defile. If you see her without the gloves, run. This is all Joshua knows about the mysterious woman until he catches a glimpse of the dagger star birthmark, a sign that she is destined to free his people from a ruthless usurper reign of terror. But she is more dangerous when following her heart. Red doesn't believe in gods. Nevertheless, she finds herself drawn into the rebellion, not by the prophecy or the chance to win the throne, but the pain of untold loss in Joshua's eyes. And this is Dagger Star, Elizabeth Vaughn. Next I have, I was looking for Beverly Jenkins and I wanted to get, uh, I was looking for Josephine. I guess these are the titles. Josephine is one of the books. Belle is one of the books. Jewel. Deadly Sexy. I was looking for all four of those, but I did not find them. Uh, so, I got this instead. Beverly Jenkins, Midnight. And this was $4.50. Let me see if the sticker come off of this one. Yep. That came right on off. Look at that cover. Beautiful. And I'll read some of this. In Boston, revolution is in the wind, yet none would ever suspect Faith's kingdom of treason. But under cover of darkness, the beautiful daughter of a Tory tavern owner become the notorious spy Lady Midnight, passing valuable secrets to the rebels. Dedicated to fighting British tyranny, she'll let nothing distract her until a dog mesmerizing stranger enter her life. A reckless worldly adventurer Nicholas Gray has returned to troubled Massachusetts, seeking revenge for the death of his rebel father. He suspects a local innkeeper, but it's the man's breathtaking ebony-skinned daughter who has truly captured his interest. Nicholas burned for the sensual, secretive lady, and faith cannot mask her own blazing desire. And faith cannot mask her own blazing desires. And that's Midnight by Beverly Jenkins. Can't wait to read that. And this is a historical. Next I have Maya Rodell. And what was I looking for with her book? Let me see. Can I find her name? I was looking for Lady Bridget's Diary. But I didn't find it. Um, I only found this one. So I'll check it out because I never read her before either. Let me see. Can I get the sticker off here? Yep. Here it comes. And this is called Lady Claire is All That. A historical and this was church here three dollars and ninety-five cent 
Yeah, I'll stick it back on there so I can show it to you. But it was $3.95. I'll read the back of this. Claire Cavendish is in search of a dupe, but not for the usual usual reason. The man she seeks is a mathematician. The man she unwittingly finds is Lord Fox, dynamic, athletic, and as bored by the equation Claire adores as she is by the social world upon which he thrives. As attractive as Fox is, he's of no use to Claire, or is he? Fox male pride has been bruised ever since his fiance jilted him. One way to recover, win a bet that he can transform Lady Claire's society, roughest diamond into its most prized jewel. But Claire has other ideas, shockingly, shockingly steamy ones. So it sounded inter interesting. And that's Maya Rodell, Lady Claire is all that. Can't wait to read that, a historical. And the last three, I went crazy because uh, I got all these last three are all by the same author, Candace Camp. Uh, no one recommended um, Candace Camp, but I think uh, one of you out there said that uh, Candace Camp also writes as Lisa Gregory. And I've mentioned some of Lisa Gregory books on here before, so I've never tried um, any other books that I had. I always read Lisa Gregory, so if she also writes as Candace Camp, so I was like, let me write that down and um, I'm going to try out some of her writing. Uh, her writing as Candace Camp. And the first one, all of these are historical. Uh, the first one is Heirloom, and it was $2.25. Take this off. So I love her writing as Lisa Gregory. Like I mentioned, if I could find a video where I recommend some of Lisa Gregory books, I would put it in, down in the description below for you to check out. But I've never read Can her writing as Candace Camp. And I didn't go check whether, whether true she wrote as Lisa, Lisa Gregory or not. But like I said, one of um, um, my subscribers out there mentioned that she write as Lisa Gregory. So I was like, let me check it out. Uh, I'll read a little bit of this. Once burned by a beautiful woman, Amos Morgan vowed never to lay his heart bare again. At 36, he was one of the most prominent farmers in western Nebraska. He filled his life tending the land and caring for his young son and his fragile ailing sister Francis. But when Francis' need became too great, Amos knew he must seek help. He never expected to find Julie Drake, a golden haired beauty whose blue eyes could melt the coldest of heart. And that's heirloom. And it's out. And look, it got a little, um, a little rolling pin, I guess, uh, some cooking and stuff gonna be going on. <laughs> it looked interesting. And I think it got an actual picture in here. Yeah. And I like this picture here. That was pretty neat. So I was like, let me check this out. I guess it's going to be like, kind of like a Western, I think. Uh, next, I have by Candace Camp. And look, I ain't had to read that. I saw that five cent on there. I was like, so. <laughs> so can I take this off? <clears throat> and this is Candace Camp. Uh, what's the name of this? The Marrying Wager. Another historical. And yeah, this was going on. Yeah. <laughs> Let me read a little bit of this. No longer in the first blush of you and without a marriage marriage portion, Miss Constant Woodley could scarcely imagine why one of the leading lights of London society should take an interest in the likes of her. But under her benefactor's guiding hand, she was transformed into a captivating creature who caught the eye of the handsome, charming, and ever so slightly notorious Lord Dominique Lathan. And before the shock of the entire ton, the nobody and the wreckage vast count showed that even in the heartless world of the marriage mark, when love was at stake, all bets were off. And so I like that uh, she was a diamond in the rough and she catches her handsome man. Yeah. And rich guy. Yeah, there you go. Candace Camp, the Mary, the marriage wager. Historical. Uh, next, I have uh, Candace Camp, pleasure, and this was fifty cent. I'm just gonna take this one off. Now we okay, got three uh, stickers on here. Nope, it's not. Don't want to come off. I'll read a little bit of this. I guess I'll try to work with that later. Free spirited Meg Monroe knows every forest path and cave passage of Loch ba Bailey or Bailey, where she gathers herbs and moss and mosses for medical for medical portions. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's start all over. Free spirited Meg Monroe knows every forest pass and every cave passes of Locke Bailey, where she gather herbs and mosses for med medical medicinal. Yeah. Medicinal. <laughs> medicinal portions. Some say her healing gifts are bewitched, but it's her fiery natural beauty that puts a spell on Damon. Earl of Mardoon, who along with his young daughter takes up residence at, at Dunkley, a fairy tale castle overlooking Locke Bailey. The new lord of the manor, arrogantly assuming he can bear her as easily as he can overtake Highlands properties, sparks Meg's fury. But a dangerously close encounter and a watery rescue reveal her fierce, fierce attraction to the man she should despise. And this is Pleasure by Candace Camp, 50 Cent. And the last one I have here, uh, this is also, can, like I said, I'll leave Candace Camp. And this was 75 Cent. Let me see, can I pull this one off? Yep, that came off easily. And this is Beyond Compare. And here's the inside. And I'll read a little bit of this. Though Kira Moreland is beautiful enough to earn the Soberite. Yeah, I'm going to skip that word. The goddess. And rich enough to attract London's most sought after gentlemen. She has yet to find love and refuse to marry without it. When she receives a strange package under mysterious circumstances. She is confronted with danger, murder, and a handsome American whose destiny is entwined with hers. Ralph McIntyre has enough charm to seduce any woman, but his smooth fa facade has a bitter past. Still, he has seen enough of the world to know Kira is in danger and he refuses to let her solve the riddle of this package alone. But even he is mesmerized by the events that unfold as Kira begins to sort out the mis mystery put to her by the arrival of a priceless antiquity. Who sent her this treasure steeped in legend and who is willing to murder to claim its secret and its glory for themselves? So this seemed like a historical murder mystery and a, and a romance all in one. <laughs> Sound pretty good. And that's Candace Camp Beyond Compare. So I hope all these, since I bought all these books by Candace Camp, I hope these at least turn out to be good. <laughs> at least two of them. Because <laughs> you know how you buy about five or six books And I mentioned this before And maybe you get two out of them that's really good Yeah, I hope all these turn out to be good But that's all I'm going to do on, on this haul Like I said, I'm going to post my other two videos Of me and McKay And then I'll do my the rest of the haul My books that I have here And in those books, uh, I did find some of uh, the books That you are, um, some of you recommended to me So in that one, I did find uh, quite a few books I think I found a couple um, But like I said, the ones that I didn't get I'm going to go and search on Amazon used books and, Or I have price books and see can I find them But that's all I have for now I hope you uh, continue to enjoy your Sunday evening Because you know what tomorrow is Work day, yeah <laughs> But uh, look, don't, don't forget I mentioned it. Let's enjoy our Sunday evening without thinking about tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I have for now. Until then, keep reading those romances and I'll see you 